it's time to revisit the Sonoff RF bridge, this time with Tasmoda. Have you ever looked at a puzzle and not been able to see the solution? But then as soon as somebody shows you the solution, you wonder how could you have ever not seen it before? Yeah, that was me with the RF bridge and Tasmoda. But now I've got the solution. So let's go back and do the RF bridge again. If you haven't seen it before, this is the Sonoff RF bridge. What's great about it is it lets you use these 433 MHz sensors, which are nice and cheap and run a long time on regular batteries. Flashing the RF bridge is pretty simple. The pins you need are right here between this LED and this little switch. Now when you go to flash it, make sure this little switch is set to off. And then after you're done, put it back to on. Next, connect your USB to serial adapter with the three volt pin going in the square then RX, TX, and ground. Now hold down this little reset button on the side and then plug your adapter into your computer. Now you can start up Flash Easy, select your sonoff.bin file and hit Flash and it's working. If you haven't seen me flash anything before, here's a link where you can find the Flash Easy file and sonoff.bin. Sorry to have to repeat this again, but I just want to be kind of complete. When the flashing finishes, leave the board connected to your computer and open up Termite. Mine's been flashed a few times before, so it's going to say some stuff here that won't match what you see if you're doing it for the first time. In my never ending quest to make flashing as easy as possible, I've set up these backlog command lines so that you have at your fingertips everything that you need to put into Termite to get your Sonoff set up with Tasmoda in just a couple clicks. Since today we're doing the RF bridge, we're going to grab this line right here, copy it, and paste it into Termite. Now, of course, you're going to want to go through and change the Wi-Fi SSID and password and your MQTT information. And if you want to change the name of this device from RF Bridge to something else, then you'll need to change that too. Once you've got that line pasted into the box at the bottom of Termite, you hit enter and it'll fill it all in for you. Beautiful. If at the bottom of your Termite box, you get a bunch of gibberish, it's because the baud rate changed. So in your settings, change the baud rate to 19200 and it should all make sense again. Should. The last thing you want to do before you disconnect Termite is type in IP address 1 so you can see the IP address that your network gave to this device. So type IP address 1 and hit enter. Then copy the IP address and paste it into your browser and you'll get this page. Beautiful. If you're looking at this and saying, hey, that looks a little different than a second ago, it's because I accidentally flashed that with an old version of Tasmoda and then I updated it to this version. The next thing you need to do is open up the Tasmoda console and then get out your sensors. These are some nice little sensors that I got from Banggood thanks again Banggood, that send two codes, one when they're closed and the other when they're open. And like I mentioned before, another thing I really like about these sensors is that they run on a single AAA battery. I don't know how long they're going to last. I'm hoping at least some number of months, but I'm sure glad I don't have to go buy some crazy special battery for them. That's nice. Now with your Tasmoda console open, you just activate your sensor. When your sensor activates, you'll get a message in your Tasmoda console. The important part to note from this message is what it says after data. That's the unique code that's gonna tell the bridge and eventually Home Assistant which sensor has been activated. Again, these have two codes. So when I move the magnet close to it, it sends one code. And when I move the magnet away, it sends a different code right there. So if you have a bunch of these sensors, go through and activate them all, write down the codes that they produce and where you're gonna put the sensor. If you do that with all your sensors and you make up a list of all these codes and where you're gonna put the sensors, then you'll be ready to go do the setup in Home Assistant. Another sensor that I got that I'm really excited about is this water leak detector. Really, it's just a single code sensor with a couple metal contacts on the bottom. If water gets around the bottom of it, it'll connect these two contacts and it'll activate the sensor. Having had a couple floods in our basement, having a sensor like this makes me very happy. While we're on the subject of sensors, I want to show you this one I got from Sonoff. It's great, but it only has one code. This sensor is only activated when the magnet moves away from the board. When that happens, it sends one code. That's fine for some applications, but it's not great when you're setting up an alarm system in your house and you want to know if the door's been open and if it's been closed. But I've still got some fun ideas for how to make some good use out of these sensors. And unfortunately, they run on a funky little battery that I don't have a lot of laying around the house. That's too bad. Before we leave Tasmoda and our sensors and start setting up Home Assistant, there's one more thing I want to show you. Some devices, like this 4-channel Sonoff Pro R2, can also receive RF signals and respond to them. In order to use the bridge with a device like that, that receives a signal, you need to program the board 
in this case, the 4-channel Pro, to respond to a signal from the bridge. Every device is going to be a little bit different. For the 4-channel Pro, to get it into learn mode, you press a button, whichever one you want, twice, like this. Then you select one of these keys from Tasmoda, like this. And you see that blinking light means it's learned that that key corresponds to that relay. Now when I click that key in Tasmoda, it triggers the relay. Pretty cool. This method will work with a lot of devices that run on 433 MHz that can receive a signal and activate. But it probably won't work on some devices like your garage door or your keyless entry in your car because those devices use a different system that requires an authentication of the transmitter. If you want to know more about it, just look up rolling codes and Wikipedia will tell you everything you want to know. One thing I want to cover that I think has caused some confusion, that's the difference between transmitting and receiving these 433 MHz signals. The Sonoff RF bridge with Tasmoda has the ability to send or transmit 16 different codes. That means if you have a switch that has the ability to receive an RF signal to be activated, you can program one of these 16 buttons to activate that switch. But you can only activate 16 switches by transmitting from the bridge. Now, receiving signals, that is, if you have a sensor that is sending a 433 MHz signal and you want Tasmoda and the RF bridge to receive that signal, as far as I know, there's no limit to how many signals from sensors can be received. Anytime the bridge receives a transmission, it interprets that signal and responds with an MQTT message sent over Wi-Fi so that Home Assistant or whatever hub you're using can understand that signal and do something with it. Now I don't have 16 sensors, so I can't test that myself. I did some reading, I tried to find an answer, and I couldn't find anything specifically saying that there was a limit to the number of signals that can be received. There's definitely a limit to the number of signals that can be transmitted. I hope that clears that up. And if I'm wrong about the sensors and the receiving being limited, then somebody please let me know. One of the best uses for these 433 MHz sensors is to set up a wireless security system around your house. Anytime a door opens or closes, or a window opens or closes, you can get a signal. In our house, we already have a wired alarm system, so I'm not going to use these sensors for that purpose. But I did find some other good uses for these sensors around the house. We have a couple refrigerators, so I put some of these open and close sensors on my refrigerator doors. Now if somebody leaves a door open too long, I can send a message that says, hey, close the door. Now that we're done messing with the sensors, it's time to jump into our configuration.yaml file and set up some stuff for Home Assistant. If you've never heard of Home Assistant, but you want to get started, you can go watch this video, or this video, or this video, or this video, or this video. Then come back, and we'll keep going. In your configuration.yaml file, you probably already have a binary sensors main heading. If you don't, go ahead and put it in now. The first sensor that you see in mine is my garage motion detector. That's a Sonoff motion sensor that sends one code when there's motion. It doesn't send a code when there's no motion. The state topic for all of these sensors when you're using Tasmoda on the RF bridge is going to be the same. This is it. The name can be anything you want, but it is important to note what you name each sensor because that's going to be what determines the entity ID, which you'll need for automations. Now the part that had me hung up with using Tasmoda and the RF bridge before was this value template. I tried a few different ways, I got a lot of help from a lot of good people, but I just couldn't get it to work. But within a few minutes of putting out the other video I did about the RF bridge, I had a whole bunch of people offer to help get me straightened out and get it working. That says a lot about the people that we've got supporting Home Assistant. And it's a big reason why I think everybody should be using it. If you don't know something and you go to the members of the community, there's a dang good chance that somebody is gonna know what you need to know and be willing to tell you without calling you dumb. That's nice. Anyways, this is the value template. This is what it should look like. And if you use this, it'll work. For the payload on, this is the code that I see in my Tasmoda console when I activate that sensor. If you have sensors that only have one code, then you need to make up a fake code to turn them back to off again. So what I've done is just use the number that I got from the code and then just add off to the end. In a few minutes, we'll set up an automation that will turn it back to off after a few seconds. With every binary sensor, you have the option of defining the device class, and there are a whole bunch of different classes you can choose from. Here's a list. 
This is a motion sensor, so I'm going to use device class motion. What that does is just give me different little icons, like a little guy standing still, and then if there's motion, he's running. That's cool. And it also changes the names of the states. It makes it a little more accurate than just on and off. I like it. The next entry I've got here is the sensor that I put on the fridge in our garage. This is one of the new sensors that has two codes. The state topic and the value template are the same. The codes, of course, are different. For payload on, I use the code that I get when the door is closed. And for payload off, I use the code I get when the door is open. Because this is on a fridge and I just wanted it to be a little different than just a door open or closed, I chose the device class cold. It's not exactly what I want, but it's pretty close. The last sensor to show you an example of here is this basement water sensor. It's a single code sensor. For this particular sensor, I don't really want a payload off. I don't want an automation to turn it back off a few seconds after it goes to on. If this water leak detector is activated, I don't want it to turn back off. I want it to scream and yell and make sure that somebody in the house does something to stop the leak. So I just left out payload off. Now for every sensor you have, you just need to add a binary sensor entry like one of these. And when you've got all that done, it's time to set up some automations. So now we're in the automations.yaml file. And the first one we're going to look at is how to set a single code sensor back to the off state after it's been activated. So what you see here is my garage motion sensor. And this automation will trigger whenever it goes from off to on. After it's been on for five seconds, it'll set it back to off using the fake code that we made up. That's really it. Nice and simple. This is an example of the automation that I actually used before when I did the other RF bridge video. It just shows a way to turn on your lights when certain doors are opened or when you detect motion in an area. In this case, if the door between the garage and the house opens or the back door to the garage, which I call the shop door, opens, or when there's motion in the garage, any one of those things will trigger the lights in the garage to turn on. Now here's an automation that will turn the lights in the garage back to off if there's been no motion sensed in the garage for five minutes. It's amazing how often I see the garage lights are on and nobody's in there. This should stop that. This is a very important automation. This is what's going to happen if that water leak detector is activated in my basement. I'm going to get an audible, hey, there's a leak in the basement, do something about it. I'm going to get a notification on my phone that says, hey, there's a leak in the basement, do something about it. And I'm going to get every LED strip in the house to start looking like police siren lights. That should cover it. To really understand what this automation does, you need to experience it firsthand. Time to test the basement leak automation. Here's my water leak detector. I'm gonna simulate a water leak by just putting my fingers on the contacts and see what happens. Holy crap, there's water in the basement. Ah! Something. Oh. And you can't see it, but I did get also a notice on the phone, so success. This is the automation that I set up so that if somebody leaves the fridge in the garage open too long, we'll get an audible, hey, somebody left the garage fridge open, please close it message. Hopefully that'll cut down my electricity bill at least a little bit. Now those single code sensors might not be as good for an alarm system, but that doesn't mean they're useless. Far from it. There's still a lot of really cool things you can do with them. Like this. That little trick with the wand and the door lock is the inspiration for our upcoming Maker Faire display. Which reminds me, if you're anywhere near Utah, we're doing a Maker Faire on September 15th, 2018. We'll have a booth set up with a bunch of DIY home automation stuff to show off and maybe a little wizardry. So if you're nearby, hope you can come on over and see us. I try to give you everything that I think you need to make these projects work. But invariably, I either leave something out or somebody comes up with a situation that I didn't think of. So if you're trying this out and you're getting stuck, there's a few places you can go for help. Discord's probably the best, but we also have a Facebook page and you can always go to the Home Assistant forums. If you want to keep up with what I'm doing next, there's Twitter and Instagram. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help me out, there's affiliated links and Patreon. And I've been pretty good about doing a live stream at least once a week, usually on Sundays. If you want to be sure to get a notification of when new videos come out or when a live stream's happening, subscribe and then click that little bell to make sure you get a notification. Well, that's it. 
the Sonoff RF bridge with Tasmoda. It opens up a whole new world of inexpensive and easy to use sensors and switches. And it'll make a great addition to pretty much any home automation setup. That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, adios.